we'll go ahead and get started here and get straight into it because we've got a pretty big crowd here today. So, Carol, why don't you kick us off? Good morning, Christian. How are you? Good morning, Carol. Very well, thanks. You? Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I good. just have a bunch of doozy questions for you. One is, Ooh. how's Ashley, how are Ashley Westwood and Tui Loma and are either one back practicing yet? Uh, Bill, yes. Ash, uh, we are still uh, we are still looking. Is uh, is continuing his uh, rehab and recovery. But uh, I saw him this morning and he looks pretty good. So we are hopeful that uh, to have him back uh, very soon. While Bill is uh, is back in training with the team, we will monitor again tomorrow for the session before we actually leave. For Toronto, but uh, we hope that uh, he's going to be available for selection. Right, and um, Swiderski is he back, and will he be rejoining the team soon? Yeah, he's back. He's back. He's uh, he arrived, and uh, he did well in the last game. I watched the game. And I thought he played with a lot of uh, endeavor. Big. Uh, uh, he capped the performance with a goal, which is always pleasing to see. Uh, no, he already was here this morning uh, to to get checked. He's, he's fine. He, he came uh, early in the morning, so of course he's going to travel with the team and we are happy to have him back. Great, and one last one from me. Um, oh, gosh. Oh, uh, Ronico, in the, the discipline he received, what was your response to that, if any? I was very surprised because from where I was, uh, it didn't look a malicious tackle. I thought it was, if anything, it was a little bit out of timing, out of sync. The ref didn't think a lot of that and I thought he was uh, in a good spot. Uh, you know, I think it's quite harsh to go from nothing to a red card, but uh, I don't want to talk too much about that. I don't want to take away the focus on what matters on on this issue. This is for our club to deal and talk with the league. But uh, it is what it is. They decided to go uh, this way, and because uh, there are other episodes that we can, could mention that possibly uh, granted uh, uh, different outcome. But in the end, I thought that the ref didn't have. Uh, a big impact in the game, apart from maybe I thought that uh, the effective time was very little and I thought that they tried to waste as much time as possible and they should have been a little bit more firm in that. But uh, other than that, uh, anyway, it is what it is, Carol, I don't want to talk too much about that. Obviously, we would have liked to have Brandt at disposal, but uh, decision from the league, we need to accept it and uh, to move on. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Carol. Let's go to Jaime. Hi, Coach. Uh, good morning. Um, good morning. I have a question for you. Um, in terms of, you were uh, an expansion team coach last season, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to wonder what your take was on St. Louis City SC's hot start. What do you think it's a, how impressed are you by it, and do you think it's a tactical thing? Do you think it's a, a mental thing or all of the above? Could just any comments on that? Yeah, Jaime. First of all, I, yeah, I was part of the coaching staff as an expansion team. It's not, I didn't start. With, with the team and uh, I'm saying this not simply because it's the reality and then you know uh, every coach has got his own uh, way of uh, seeing football, the methodology and uh, to look at characteristics of players so obviously that when you change uh, in during the season is not the same as starting with uh, with the same with the same idea with one coach this is the, 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 the first thing that I wanted to clarify. The second thing is that they already had a team while we started, for example, from scratch. So they already had uh, something to build from, as opposed to be a total new project like we are, and it's not the same. And uh, no, I'm not surprised because I think that if you have uh, already a clear identity and you want to have... Uh, players that they fit those characteristics, I think that uh, you can go and uh, play. Then after the result can go your way and I thought that they had uh, a bit of luck in the first couple of games also against us uh, in the sense that they were gifted uh, goals that normally you don't 
also Austin did the same. But credit to them, they are doing, uh, they are doing well and uh, they are following their own philosophy. Uh, I have respect for what they are doing and uh, this is what we are trying to do here in a different way. We are trying to build an identity, that's what I said. It takes a little bit more time because again, we are a total new project that also change uh, while we were building. So that takes a little bit of time, but the boys, I can, I'm very happy with the boys that I have here and they are training well every day. So good, uh, we wish uh, St. Louis well, but we want to focus on, on the work that we, have, uh, that we have here. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go to Brian and then Will on deck. Good morning, Christian. Good morning, Brian. I had a, I had a question regarding uh, Federico Bernadeschi. Mm -hmm. uh, he kind of had had uh, Charlotte's number last year in terms of creating two really fantastic goals. Yeah. Uh, um, how do you stop a player of that quality who's just capable of creating brilliant moments out of out of sometimes seemingly nothing? And um, if, if if at all possible, or is it a matter of just knowing that? those goals can come regardless of what you do in a matter of just trying to know that you have to create goals on your end to kind of counteract that kind of brilliance in the attacking half from that. Yeah, uh, we know the characteristics of Bernardeschi, we know that he has this ability of uh, of creating situation uh, when he comes inside, uh, when he shoots from outside of the box, uh, from uh, set pieces, uh, we are fully aware. Sometimes the situation in game can happen even if you prepare really well that you know the ball goes to him and then in a, in a situation that is favorable. But uh, the, the most important thing is to be aware of his characteristics and to try to limit his support to the team. Uh, it's difficult to stop completely a player from playing, uh, but uh, the job that we have to do, and not only with him, also with other players, that Toronto have is to limit uh, the, the, the apport or at least to limit uh, the moments in which they can express the best qualities. So in case of Bernardeschi there are different situations that we study with the, with the boys and I think the boys are pretty aware of his qualities and what we need to do to limit his apport to, to, to his game. And then uh, my last question was, I saw a stat uh, on off the analyst's website saying that y'all had created the second most turnovers in the attacking third. So it shows that like the high press, high line that y'all are trying to implement seems to be working in terms of creating turnovers, but it hasn't led to any goals. What kind of um, what kind of has to change in terms of um, turning those turnovers y'all y'all are creating in the attacking third into quick transitions and into getting some goals up in, in the end. Yeah, first of all, I'm glad you saw these stats because for me this is a very important stat. Uh, I look at not many stats. Well, I'm, I think that they are important. I want to clear straight away. I think it's important to look at, uh, at numbers. But I think it's important to look at numbers in an, uh, in an effective way, in an efficient way that you know they can match uh, what the model of the game you are trying to to create, and I think this is a very important stat for me. We, are by, you know, we look at that before even that. Uh, obviously, that uh, the last week we watch at that because I think that a lot of time those moments, and I try to say this in the press conferences, but it's difficult uh, maybe to see those things. That these are chances that we created but they don't count as chances so when you look at the raw numbers they will not appear because uh, maybe the last pass is misplaced maybe the run is a little bit too early or too late but uh, these are big goal chances and we look at those in the in the meetings so i think that the boys are doing a great job of uh, regaining the ball in high areas with consistency but unfortunately, we cannot uh, uh, transform this in goal. I think it's a matter of time because I think that the guys can, uh, as long as they are clear about the structure, as long as they are clear about how we have to move together in a synchronized way, they will create problems to the opposition. And uh, then to be a little bit more cold in the heart, in the in the mind, and but 
to be to have fire in the belly to execute sometimes the fire it gets also to the head and uh, we rush decisions that instead with a little bit more composure we can turn into uh, relatively easy chances uh, or, or even goals. So I think that the boys have done a great job, that's why I was uh, frustrated for them because uh, we could have easily scored few more goals and we didn't just for really for simple composure and I think that this is uh, the element that we need to, to improve in our game. Thank you, Christian. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Uh, Will. Christian, good morning. Hope you're doing well. Good morning, Will. Thank you. Uh, I know I'm not trying to let you uh, give away trade secrets here on a Thursday, but <laughs> who are some of the players you're looking forward to to, uh, to fill the absence of Brandt and uh, potentially Ashley as well if uh, he's not able to be with you guys? You know, it's not a secret that the midfielders we have and uh, uh, they are uh, there to be seen. We have uh, uh, Ben, we have Chris, we have uh, obviously Nuno, Carol is back and, you know, so we have a number of options that we can use. Uh, we want to consolidate the work that we have been doing in the last few weeks. Of course, Brand and Ash they are two important players for our, for our team, for our squad. Uh, but I'm sure that whoever will take the place will give the best, and I and they will be, uh, and they will be playing with the energy and tempo and commitment that I want. And also they know the job really well. Of. We normally mix the teams during the week because I believe that is the right thing to do. And uh, and I've seen this week that everybody worked pretty clearly. Uh, about the what they what they have to do on the pitch. So the focus are, as always to be with the guys that they are uh, that they are uh, they can contribute in the week. And then the, for the other ones is to get ready for for the next uh, uh, 100% to to stay ready because they are ready. Yesterday I had this conversation with Brandt. So whoever will uh, play will have. Uh, my full confidence, the confidence of the coaching staff, because everybody during the week worked really well. And yesterday, uh, we had uh, they had again a, a very good session. Uh, the first half you guys played in Orlando was probably the best first half you played all year, and it really kind of set the tone for the rest of that contest. What do you think is behind that? Because I think you could agree that the first halves of the home contests have not been as good as the one you had in Orlando. Yeah, it's, uh, there are many things that go into a game, especially when you are trying to come back from results that they were not ideal. And uh, I think that uh, there are certain things that we could have done better also in the first half against uh, Red Bulls. And uh, we clarified that and it was simple changes. In the second half you could see that it was a different team and I thought I was pleased with the performance because Red Bull for me is a, is a very good team that will always try to play the game against anybody and to press you high and to make it difficult for you to play. I thought that we limit that and we could play in their own half and it's not easy to play all games in the half of Red Bulls, mainly because they don't allow many teams to do that and I think that our boys has to be credited for that. We, will, we would have liked to score more goals, I think we were close to do so. And uh, yeah, of course we have to improve and we want to play that kind of football for 90 minutes, but uh, give the boys a little bit of time to do that. And, uh, uh, and if you, one element that maybe has been important in Oslando is the experience of Ashley to move the midfield uh, without the ball and uh, I thought that it was important for us as he understand more and more how to play because we had many discussions with Ash, I spoke with him obviously on a daily basis and he was used to a different style of play. But one thing he does well is to keep the team always together and compact, especially when we don't have the ball and uh, his support in that, uh, his leadership in that moment is, uh, is very important to us.
Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's go to Alex. Hi, Christian. Good morning. Um, I just have a, I have a very quick follow up on Brent Bronico's situation. Mm -hmm. I know you don't want to, I know you said you don't want to dwell on it too much, but this is more of a procedural question. Mm -hmm. Did the league office reach out to you guys like immediately after the game? When did they reach out to you guys? And like, did they, were they transparent throughout the whole process or was it like, did the news come in yesterday and y'all were kind of blindsided? I think that they reach pretty, I think that they have a procedure, Alex, that they follow with all the clubs and they reached out. Uh, I knew about uh, the, the news on Monday morning that they were reviewing and then after they let, we knew by Tuesday that uh, Brandt was given suspension. Okay. Uh, and so, I mean, I, this is the procedure that they have, and I think it's the same for every club, I guess. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Christian. You're welcome. All right, Steve. Hi, Christian. Good morning. Good morning, Steve. Um, what was your impression of the Crown Legacy's first match? You had a number of, uh, you know, Sobachinski and Adam and, and others who were involved there. Yeah. Um, what was your impression of their first match, and how do you see using Crown Legacy to uh, keep the first team uh, in motion and sharp? Yeah, we also had Ben Ben, the Chris Eggert that played in that game. Uh, no, first of all, it was uh, it was great to see another another new uh, team, you know, taking shape here at Charlotte FC. Um, I think it's very important. I, I wouldn't like to use that word, you know, to use them because I don't think it's the right verb. I think that we have to work together with uh, Jose. The club has to be unified in that and to groom players for the first team. This is our main focus. So to have a style that is similar, second team with the first team. And uh, to have uh, a second team that can be, uh, you know, to have that is an advantage for the players that they go from the first team down to play and then to keep minutes in the legs and to keep uh, uh, practicing what then they will be asked when we are uh, when they are in the first team environment or the opposite when we will integrate some of the up to the first team some of the boys like we had Jack Neely or uh, Andrew Privet or Brandon Cambridge or Patrick Agiman so there are a few or even Amadi Diop that they can uh, be comfortable with the same principle of play so when they come we can uh, you know, we can decrease the gap of experience because if there is clarity in what you have to do, your experience uh, count a little bit less as that if you have two different systems and then after the experience is important because you understand by, you know, through experience how to adapt. But when you have a clear idea of what you do, second team, first team, they do the same thing, then uh, for the boys that they go down to have minutes in the legs and the one that they come up to integrate the first team, everything is, is so much easier. And they just, uh, the, the, the difference is going to be probably just the intensity of the game rather than the principle of play. Right, and there was a player who, they also had a player missing for international duty mm -hmm. uh, last week with Petkovic who was with yeah, you know, Serbia's U21 team. He's yeah. already He's debuted in January for their senior team. Mm -hmm. Have you had a chance to see him play yet? What are your yeah. thoughts about him? Yeah, no, I've seen, I've seen Nicola. I think he's a player that uh, has certain characteristics that I like in midfield. He's composed, he's, uh, he's good on the ball, he's calm. Um, and uh, yeah, I think he's a talent, but we need to make sure that we nurture him and that we prepare him in the best possible way to become uh, part of the first team. This is our challenge with these uh, young, uh, young players. That to have certain abilities is, uh, is one thing. To become a consistent player in the professional environment is another thing. So there is a lot of work that goes into that. It seems that you have the right uh, 
technical characteristics for the midfielders that we like. Uh, he seems to have a, a good uh, a good head. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been chosen to be captain of his day under 21 team. And so there is a good foundation to build from, and uh, it is great to, to have him here, but we have to make sure that uh, we work with him on a daily basis to develop, uh, develop in the best possible way. Okay, thanks. And uh, I guess you were kind of split because he, he captained a game or two, uh, a loss to Italy in the U21, so... Yeah. yeah I, I saw the game, I saw the game, I saw the game. I saw the game, okay. and, uh, yeah. I was always with, uh, with Zoran that, you know, is from Serbia. And, but we were very uh, gentlemen in that. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Uh, last two here. We'll go to Mike, and then we'll finish with Carol. Good morning, Christian. How are you? Good morning, Mike. Good. Thank you. I hope you're well, too, and I hope you have got this movie question ready as well. I the <laughs> I'm giving I'm you homework go. now. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm prepared, Coach. I'm prepared. Uh, I think I actually have two questions first. Uh, yeah. The... The uh, first off, uh, the last two games, Georgie Marks in goal for you. Yeah. Uh, has, has that been a noticeable difference in the team, or was it just the opportunity to give George an opportunity to play after Pablo was unable to get victories in the first three? Uh, I think, George, as I said in the past, George and Pablo, they push each other, and they are two big competitors. If you see them in training, you will know what I mean. They are two guys with different characteristics, with different personalities, but one thing they have in common, they are really strong competitors. They love to compete, they love to, to do well, they love to win, and they love to, you know, to show their personality when they play. Um, as I said in the past, uh, sometimes uh, you, know, you have to make choices because uh, things work uh, not in the way that you would like and you want to see different things in the in the team that always I repeat has to be the the center of my thoughts is the is the collective and so we decided together with the coaching staff to give uh, George an opportunity George took it and uh, he interprets the, the the role with the, with his own flavor with his own characteristics and so far he's done well he played with personality I also thought that Pablo did uh, did well, did his job. Uh, unfortunately, we gifted some goals, like we did again against uh, against Red Bull. But uh, so far, George uh, took uh, these two games with uh, with personality, and uh, he has done well in my in my opinion. So credit to him to be ready, and this is what we always say to the players that. Uh, that they are not playing, that they have to keep working hard because life will give them an opportunity. How? We don't know, but the, their job is to be ready, like it happened with Brandt, for example. That was, uh, we didn't expect that, but all of a sudden there is another opportunity for a midfielder to play and uh, to show that he's ready to take his opportunity. Uh, this is how life works, not just in football, but generally speaking. We don't know how opportunities will come our, our way, but in my experience, I can see that uh, if you work hard and you work well, somehow the opportunity will come to you uh, in, in many different ways. And I think the job of every one of us is to be ready to take it. Looking ahead to Toronto on Saturday, they're, they're sitting at 1-1-3 one, one in the table. Uh, quick thumbnail sketch as to what they present and, and the dangers that, they, uh, that you guys will have to deal with on the field on Saturday? Uh, the usual danger, Mike, because they have uh, some uh, very good individual players uh, that they have uh, always had uh, since I was here with uh, New York and even before, obviously. They always had uh, marquee players that they, they do really well and they invest heavily on that. Plus, they have uh, some good domestic players, some very experienced players with quality and a very experienced coach that knows the league and, uh, and, uh, and, and the players uh, and the players management inside out because of the experience that he, have, that he has behind him. 
So it's a team that uh, is always difficult to play against, uh, but at the same time we need to be very aware of our, very focused about our game and to keep building on what we work on a, on a weekly basis. The game is long, it's 90 plus minutes and we need to, we will have moments in the game in which we can, you know, impose our, our philosophy of, of the game and the, our intensity. And, uh, and we want to do that also against Toronto, even if it's a, a difficult uh, pitch, but uh, we are focused on ourselves and uh, our strength. And finally, uh, what is your favorite Michael Caine movie? Ooh, Michael... <laughs> you know, it, it's, you serve it on, uh, on a plate, right? <laughs> the Italian job, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking your, your thought, you know, it's wide open for your answer. Yeah, no, there are a few. He's a great actor. Uh, I have to say that uh, you chose well, but uh, just because you give me an easy way to answer, I will say the Italian job. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, we're going to go Carol for a final follow-up and finish there. Christian, I just wanted to circle back to Adam Armour, um, him getting back in action. I don't think he got a ton of minutes, but no. just to clear that hurdle and be back out on the field, how, how nice was that for him? I think he must have been pretty nice to be on the field after so many months of uh, rehab and uh, hard, hard work uh, uh, off the pitch. It's not an easy situation, especially psychologically as well as physically. But the job and the career of, uh, of, uh, of an athlete is that as well. You know, you have to go through the up and downs of your, of your body as well, how he can get injured. And uh, it's part and parcel of, of being a professional athlete. So it must have been really pleasing for him. And he needs to build on that. He needs to build confidence of him being on the pitch and uh, giving his contribution to the team. Uh, the focus is an interesting thing because it's, it's impossible not to be focused. You might be focused on the wrong things, but for, uh, for the brain it's difficult to be, not to be focused. And so his job now is to be focused on the right things and to make sure that uh, he contributes as much as possible, look after himself in the best possible way, and to be ready for when he will be called to action and. Uh, and just to build from strength to strength and to strengthen his body as much as possible to, to be ready for the challenges ahead. It's a long season, we just started and I said it many times, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So uh, he needs to build this mental strength as well as physical strength. Did they have him at, at, uh, outside back or was he, I know you mentioned maybe trying him at some wing, so I'm not, I wasn't sure. Uh, I think that they are looking at uh, which player to best fill that position. I thought that these, uh, I didn't speak specifically with Jose about uh, Adam uh, substitution, but I guess because the, the boys, they were uh, two one down, he wanted to add some more attacking force. And we know that he can be, he can be strong when he attack, at least in my view, he has more attacking qualities, uh, he has good attacking qualities and so maybe that could have been the idea to, to have him as a left back so that he could overlap and create more chances going forward. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Guys. All right, thanks everyone, we'll end it there.